What's going on? Andy, we're going to see high voltage in a few minutes, with or without you. All right, all right, I'm on my way. On this episode of High Voltage, Gabby gives us an insight on the CBHS Caught You Sleeping account, Alex reviews the hit movie Spider-Man No Way Home, Thomas takes us back to how video games came to be, and much, much more. What's up, Cypress Bay? I'm Samantha Duarte. I'm Miguel Cabrera, and High Voltage starts now. Spider-Man No Way Home was a long-awaited movie that swung into theaters last month. Audiences couldn't wait to watch it and were pleasantly surprised with the outcome. Here's Alex giving his review on this popular movie. What's up Cypress Bay? My name is Alex and today I'll be reviewing the recent release Spider-Man No Way Home. Receiving 93% Rotten Tomatoes, viewers love this movie, especially MCU and Spider-Man fans. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched the movie, what are you doing? Go watch it! This movie includes other MCU characters like Doctor Strange and even characters from other universes such as Green Goblin and Doc Ock. Hello Peter. But what really caught the attention of the viewers was the introductions of Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. That's right, three different Spider-Men were all in this movie. This is probably why it was such a huge hit. However, I think that combining di different universes is a cliche trick that has already been done in the Spider-Man universe. Though, this is only my personal review, so let's find someone else's thoughts. Oh well, hey Jesse. Hi. What did you think of the movie? Um, I don't like it because MIT should have accepted all of them and so we wouldn't have this movie all together but you know they brought Andrew Garfield in I really liked that um, it was a very cool move definitely worth the money as for aesthetics well you can decide for yourself Don't. Ah! look there has to be another win if you liked what you saw then go grab a bag of popcorn some soda and watch the movie this is Alex G, CBTV. You know, I was checking out the clubs here and none of them really stuck out to me. But what are you looking for? I want to have fun while helping my community. Have you checked out Paws Club? Yeah, I've heard a little bit about it, but I don't know much. Lucky for you, here's Lily to highlight what Paws Club is all about. You may be familiar with seeing stray animals on the road. Some people choose to walk right past them, while others make it their mission to save them. So we strive to get as many animals in our community adopted or homes or medical help as possible, which basically means that we do fundraisers to co cover medical costs and fundraisers to help shelters that are also helping animals get homes. Our mission with I Heart Rescue specifically is they, they came to South Florida, um, I think in 2021 in the summer. Um, and they didn't have all the resources that they have now. So they were fairly new um, and we, we helped build up their rescue. They have a barn in the back and we helped to reorganize that and they have a garage where they nurse the puppies. Although we see an immense amount of hard work, Delaney also has help along the way. If I get that text message saying they're gonna need volunteers, you'll witness me throwing my phone around, like rushing to be one of the first ones to reply. It's like a rush of joy because it's like my therapy. <laughs> and with the same passion. Is that I'm doing something good. And to me sometimes, it almost feels like I'm not because I love it so much that it doesn't feel like a task for me. It doesn't feel like I'm going out of my way to do a service project. It just feels like I'm living my life the way I want to live it. I'm Lily Riera. <laughs> CB. TV. Video games have been gaining popularity over the past few years. However, many gamers just put on their headset and dive into the world of gaming. What most don't know is how it all started. Therefore, Thomas is here to inform us on the history on these interactive universes. Video games have become one of the largest industries in the world, with billions playing each year. With an industry so huge, one might wonder, 
Where did it all begin? Tennis for Two is believed to be the first video game created. Designed in 1958 by William Higginbottom, it was made to simulate trajectories with wind resistance. This game, however, exploded in popularity with lines of mostly high school students being formed to play the game. After Tennis for Two was created, there were some video games made, however none nearly as popular as the table tennis themed video game known as Pong. It was released in 1972 and is believed to have begun the growth of arcade games. Six years later, Space Invaders was released in Japan. This game was considered to be revolutionary as it was dictated by lives instead of a timer or a score. Shortly after, arcade games went into a golden age. Several hit titles were released that surged into popularity such as Galaga, Pac-Man, and Donkey Kong. These games also introduced the idea of having characters in video games which companies later adopted as mascots. The release of the Game Boy in 1989 sparked a new era of gaming in the form of consoles. The console was released by Nintendo and included Tetris which later became one of the best selling video games of all time. As the years went by, other popular consoles were released such as the Playstation and the Xbox, which had games such as Grand Theft Auto and Final Fantasy VII. In the 21st century, gaming is enjoyed through many different forms, such as computers, consoles, and mobile phones. While these forms of gaming have been around for quite some time, there is one that is relatively new, virtual reality. The development of the Oculus Rift in the early 2010s gave way to the future of gaming. Several other companies such as Sony and Valve have developed their own VR headsets and the markets for these seem to be going nowhere but up. No one knows where gaming is headed, however history tends to repeat itself so there will likely be new ways to experience video games in the future. I'm Tom Silverado, CBTV. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Everyone has a wild side. A side that can only be brought out in the right way. This isn't a toy. It's an escape. Claw and Conquer. Lelu, unleash the beast within. And now, here's Miguel with sports. What's up, Tigers Bay? I'm Miguel Valen, and the Super Bowl is just around the corner. But do you know how it started? Here's Maya with the origin of the Super Bowl. What's up, Cypress Bay? It's about to be February, so you know what that means? Super Bowl time. In light of this time of the year, let's talk about the origin of this fan favorite event. The NFL, National Football League, was formed in 1920. However, in 1960, the new AFL, American Football League, was formed. Though they were rivals for years to come, Finally, in 1966, the founders came together and negotiated a deal for the two leagues to merge. The NFL is split into two conferences. One, the NFC, National Football Conference, and two, the AFC, American Football Conference. Every year the Super Bowl is played by the two champions of said conferences. But have you ever wondered where the name came from? The Super Bowl. And no, I'm not talking about a giant cereal bowl. And believe it or not, it was actually inspired by a kid's toy. One of the main founders of the AFL, Lamar Hunt, created the name for the Super Bowl. It was named after his son's favorite toy, the Super Bowl. Super Bowl eventually turned into Super Bowl. The winning team of the Super Bowl is awarded the Vince Lombardi Trophy. The trophy is named in honor of NFL coach Vince Lombardi who led the Green Bay Packers to win the first two Super Bowl games. The first Super Bowl was played against the Green Bay Packers and the Kansas City Chiefs, with a winning score for the Packers of 35 to 10. And I can't believe we're coming up onto our 56th Super Bowl. Guess some traditions never die. I'm Maya Wolf, CB TV. The science behind the sport can be quite intriguing, but do you know how to kick a soccer ball? Here's Reese teaching us on how to do it. Hi, I'm Reese Lampel, and this is how to kick a soccer ball according to WikiHow. 
The first step is to look up at where you want the ball to go and check where the other players are. After you've taken in everything around you, look back down at the ball and keep looking at the ball until you've kicked it. When you're kicking the ball, start by running towards the ball with even strides. When you get to the ball, place the foot you're not kicking with next to it. Bring your kicking leg far back and bend a little bit at the knee while keeping your toes pointed at the ground. While you're kicking the ball, keep your ankle in place and make sure it doesn't move. Target the middle of the ball with your foot and kick the ball with either the laces of your shoe for a powerful shot or the side of your foot for an accurate shot. After you kick the ball, follow through with your kicking leg. And that's how you kick a soccer ball according to the internet. I'm Reese Lampel, CV TV. And that's all for High Voltage Sports. Hey, have you seen the Cypress Fake Caught You Sleeping account? They're everywhere. Yeah, guess what? I'm on it. I'm terrified of getting posted on it. Tell me about it. Here's Gabby with the inside look on this popular account. Throughout the school year of 2021 through 2022, there has been a new trend going around on TikTok and Instagram. What's the purpose of this new trend, you may ask? Well, it's to catch your classmates doing embarrassing things during school. For example, bathroom feed accounts caught you lacking, bad parking pages, and the best of all, caught you sleeping. What makes these accounts so interesting is that the account runners are all anonymous. At Cypress Bay High School, there has been about 1,680 images posted on the account with thousands of students who have been caught sleeping during class. I think that the account does have a positive impact on the school because it gives something else to laugh about instead of being pressured by grades. I think that certain types of accounts can cause problems because there's different reactions from different people. Like some people like find it funny and they know that like it's like a joking kind of matter but I feel like there could be kids who kind of like feel uncomfortable of people like taking pictures of them without them knowing. It could have an effect on somebody because say you don't know what somebody's going through like the smallest things could really upset somebody and just like being violated like that like post like you're just trying to sleep peacefully and then someone just posts you online and it doesn't seem like it has a very positive effect. Um, I'm not too concerned about getting caught sleeping and posted on the page considering I don't sleep at school like if I wanted to sleep I just go home and sleep. With new trends popping in and out every day this trend has definitely made its mark. I'm Gabriela Parra, CV TV. Please wear your ID. It's good for you. This is Brian Power reporting for news, and today we're going to be talking about new things that are coming to Netflix in 2022 in the Bay. Number one, Locky and Key season three. This first TV show that we're looking at is a drama genre show where three siblings move in with their mom after their dad's passing. Why moved in, they discover magical keys to unlock powers and just overall secrets. Number two, Stranger Things season four. After probably going over what Stranger Things is about two times already, I think it's necessary to explain again just to have an idea on what's going on for this new season. In a normal Midwestern town of Hawkins, Indiana, out of the blue, a boy vanishes into dust and his group of friends and family search for answers while getting into all sorts of deadly events. Number three, The Umbrella Academy season three. After a strange siblings reunited after the unexpected father's passing, these siblings with noteworthy powers uncover family secrets that are shocking. And not only that, but they also discover that there is a looming threat to humanity. This is Brian Power, CBTV. The 2020 worldwide villain, COVID-19, brings on a new variant into 2022. That variant being Omicron, and Jared is here to touch on the subject. What's up, Suckers Bay? I'm Jared brought to you, and today I'm going to be talking about a new COVID variant, which is just taking the world by storm. First and foremost, what is Omicron? Well, you see, the Omicron is a variant of COVID-19 that is more contagious with less of a health detriment compared to the older variants. Well, some common symptoms include 
common cold symptoms such as runny nose, headache, as well as fatigue and even sneezing. The World Health Organization found 18 million people with the variant in last week alone. And that's just in the United States. Out of these, around 50,000 people were known dead, which is an insane increase from the count which stood at only one death just a few months earlier. This variant is 91% less lethal in comparison to Delta, the viral COVID-19 disease base. I'm Jared Brodsky, CB TV. That's all for this episode of High Voltage. If you'd like to see more seasons of High Voltage, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Cypress Bay CBTV. And follow us on social media. I'm Miguel Cabrera. And I'm Samantha Duarte. Thanks for watching.